As kids get ready to head back to school, chances are is that they'll be seeing old and new friends. It's easier to make friends when you're younger in school and you have sports and other activities. Yeah, but what about adults? Is it harder for us to make friends? And if so, what can we do about it? Well, board certified life coach Marlene Boaz has some answers for us. And thank you for being here, Marlene. Thanks, it's Marlene. My pleasure. Yeah. And it, I think it is harder. I mean, I, especially as older adults, sometimes they're not as involved in the community. They're more isolated and it right. becomes much more difficult, right? It really does. And so that's why it's really important not to become socially isolated. Yeah. We know that for health and well-being, having relationships and friends is a big part of that is important. So it's worth taking a few minutes just to just talk about it. Mm -hmm. So how do how do we how do we make friends? How do we make oh, friends? Do what do we do, Marlene? <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> well, you know, like you said, you know, kids always make friends, but um, as adults, helping kids learn to make friends and be friends—that's an important lesson that we teach our kids. Um, and then as adults, you know, I lived, grew up in Pittsburgh, moved away for 35 years, and then came back about seven years ago. So as an adult reintegrating into a community, I thought, wow, this is a challenge because people who have been here have their own closed groups of friends and trying to integrate. And so it's really important to make connections. And so do you involve yourself in All activities? Right. Do you sign up for a dance class? All of the above. Whatever interests you, you've got to put yourself out there and really um, integrate wherever you can and whatever groups interest you and be open and very genuine about making friends. It's easy, you know, when, when you have children and then you the parents of the children, right. you have a lot of connections. But when you don't, it's a whole different kind of experience, but it's critically important to your health and well-being. Mikey and I were talking about this at the top of the show. Mm -hmm. Like some friends that you make, you know are going to be lifelong friends. Right. And I assume after you move back to after 35 years, some of those people you connected with right away, right? Exactly. But as you said in the opening, sometimes you grow apart. Like had I met them now as adults? Oh, you might not have been friends. Yeah. Well, you don't, oh, yeah. you don't know because you've changed in so many ways. But because friendships are based on history and experience and sh sharing the highs and lows, that history holds, yeah. which is very important. So creating new histories with new friends is, is an important piece. Now, what role does social media play? Because you, you, know, you kind of feel like you're connected to someone because maybe you like their posts or you see their pictures, but you really don't talk to them. Is it like a false sense of friendship? Well, I think it's, it's kind of layered. In some ways, social media keeps me connected with people, um, friends I've had in different parts of the country over time, like mm -hmm. I'll see their kids getting married or whatever, their grandchildren or whatever. So on that level, it's good. But the real face-to-face -face and personal sharing experiences is what's important. So you have to balance it all. Social media friends are not really friend friends. Yeah. You can't really yeah. count on them. I agree. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. You'll get a little post-it, you know, if you're having a challenge, but they might not be there to really, you know, take care of you. I love this, too, because one of the things you say is, you know, you can't pick your family, but mm -hmm. you can pick your friends, okay. and really your friends become your family in some instances, right? Right, mm -hmm. right. And, and your family can be your friends, too, but when you look at your friends, you really have to think. You can have different kinds of friends, different friends for different things that they mm -hmm. bring to you and that you bring to them. And so you can do sort of an audit of your friendships. This particular friend, what really think about what you get from them, what they get from you, and then strengthen that. Mm -hmm. And if there are some friends that are encouraging in ways that aren't so great for you, mm -hmm. perhaps you want to limit it. Right. You know? Cut you, them off. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Cut them loose, Marlene <laughs> says, right? <laughs> but if you have somebody who's always very negative and sort right. of <gasps> right. kind of saps yeah. your energy, you can, one or two things, you can talk to them about it. Mm -hmm. Or you could just sort of limit your exposure. Well, yeah. the point is you have to be intentional as an adult. Exactly. To cultivate those friendships. To cultivate mm -hmm. and nurture. And it's important for your health and well-being. We know that that connectedness makes you healthier and happier. Fantastic. Wow. Always great advice. Board certified life coach Marlene Boaz and reg regular PTL contributor. Thank you very much for being here. My pleasure. And you can look for more helpful advice on Marlene's website. You'll find the link at PittsburghTodayLive.com.